fun. So we need good communication, you know, we need the back and forth type of communication, but we also need somebody who's good at write, writing minutes and, uh, and sending out then uh, to the group so that we're all on the same page and understand, have a, have a common understanding of what's going on. That's correct. A yeah. And the, not only that agreement that they've been heard, and that, that, that's the time that uh, items can be changed because they may have heard something different and we can go back and correct it at that point. Okay. So in this particular uh, situation uh, that we're talking about, what are some short-term and long-term goals for the parents and for the family that were established? Well, let's, let's really talk about some short-term. It may be uh, something as simple as uh, a trip with the, uh, let's say a, a trip down the Danube because mm -hmm. at some point there was a great moment for mom and dad in the past and they want to bring the children in and the grandchildren in. So we may need to, to actually bring that up and if they don't have the, the, the right resource for the trip is help to take them over and do that uh, to make the trip and, and experience this uh, lifetime trip together as a family. Mm -hmm. uh, it may be longer term uh, goals too. It may be the two children in the hypothetical family. You know, you may be able to, uh, want to be able to put there where the children can go to some elite school. Well, back when you and I first started out, Michael, you know, uh, you know, a, a state college was four thousand dollars a year, and Stanford was eight thousand a year, and right now Stanford's uh, fifty thousand a year, let's say. So th this takes some longer term planning and may take greater resources of the family money than, uh, than let's say, that it would be for uh, a trip, let's say, in down the Danube or some mm -hmm. other trip like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So in the family that you were dealing with, how were the goals implemented? So uh, the implementation has been very, very uh, well. The, the financial issues, uh, they were, they became very uh, apparent. So let's say overcharges, you know, we can do that, deal with that because we can right price the services that really are being done. Uh, let's say a, a family that doesn't have a trust, uh, then it's, uh, may have assets in a number of states they may not. And so then it could be uh, in the case, uh, in one case is, taking a trip, picking up uh, the parents and taking them over to the attorney's office and actually working with the attorney to help them establish the trust based on the previous meetings and everything that's been discussed in the notes. Mm -hmm. uh, and then a trip over to their accountant's office because nothing is, can be done in a vacuum. You have to have your entire team together, your planner, you want to have your fiduciary there if you need a fiduciary, you need to have your attorney on board, you need to have your accountant on board because no one wants to step on an avoidable landmine. Mm -hmm. Why blow yourself up, mm -hmm. Put it, bring all the information out before you do finalize everything and put together and implement your plan. And then share that plan once you've got everything, that's part of the progress report that goes to the children. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Okay, so why don't you uh, then mention so some of the f follow up and feedback steps that are being done? Well, the, the, the important parts are the minutes to the family. The, the family needs to be, the children especially, need to be brought into, here, uh, into the minutes uh, to where we have more eyes, more ears. What are their emotions there? Can, this is their time to be heard. Uh, then progress reports, as I said, is no reason to have a six to eight hour meeting without follow up and the progress. And we may need some help from the other family members. Uh, it could, may be someone that's not a family member. We may need to also bring in other professionals or help support. But we need to have these progress reports to say we have brought them in and do you need to also talk with them as well. Mm -hmm. So progress reports are very important. Mm -hmm.
Okay. Well, what are some of the long-term benefits of going through this process? I mean, this is a little bit of a selling game, uh, and so maybe you can talk a little bit about that. Well, I think it's less sales. I think there's, it's a benefits. Uh, okay. This is the benefits game, not the, the sales game. Uh, way too often it is a sales game, but it's really the benefits that, that should be looked at. Legal fees, uh, it, just because you have the right document. Uh, that is very, very, very important. Uh, the difference of going through, the cost of going through probate versus being able to go through, uh, go through the, the trust process. Uh, number two is, is privacy. Mm -hmm. uh, if you have a trust, you have privacy. Uh, then number three is an expense. Let's say you have uh, assets that are physical assets outside the state. So you, you, this would be better uh, taken care of through the trust uh, than it would be through a will. So we, we, we can ex uh, control fees. Uh, the, the, not only that is there may be significant assets and you can get reduction of fees because you're pulling the assets. So, and not only that, you'll probably get better asset management because you're going to get institutional management. So let's back up for just a moment on that one because it, it probably will go, you know, right sure. over the head of our viewers. So in this particular case, what we're saying is, okay, we've got a family here. They may have significant assets, particularly mom and dad, hopefully have accumulated significant assets. <clears throat> and right now the, the family may have uh, the management of the, the family assets is scattered. Yeah. So in other words, you know, John's using a broker, Sally's using you know, the financial planner, this, that, and the other thing. So, so it's all over the place. Right. But the fact of the matter is, is if in fact they would more centralize the management, then you could actually negotiate much lower fees uh, for uh, what you're trying to accomplish. That's right. Instead of starting everybody out as if it's dollar one and you're paying the maximum sales charge, what you're going to do is be able to have a pooling of interest, if you would, or and, and you're going to be able to be able to get better discounts. And you're also going to get access to better management many times because it's not going to be a retail uh, solution. It may be a more of an institutional solution that would work better for the family uh, because they have en enough assets in one spot. Okay. It's, so and, moving on, how about uh, then the better advice uh, better aspect? Ad, better yeah. advice, that, that is absolutely is, is true because uh, from a number of places, uh, A, if there's not advice that's readily out there because you pull the money and you can distribute the cost of that advice over uh, the, the people, uh, the number of the family that want to participate. Not only that is there may be some institutional manager that has a higher minimum that no one would get to participate in if they hadn't put it uh, together. Not only that is you can hire the best advice. Instead of uh, you can hire the best attorney in town or the attorney that's most applicable to your situation because you're, you're, you now have the entire family together and they all have bits and pieces of the same problem. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's talk about privacy for a second because you brought that up, again, very briefly, but actually I think it's a huge thing and actually that uh, people ask about, you know, what are the benefits of a living trust? And the fact of the matter is, is really you can get a lot of the same benefits of a living trust by just making a trust under your will, but privacy is one that you cannot. And so why don't you talk a little bit about your thoughts about that. Maybe I'll throw in something myself. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, most people have not thought through that when someone passes on, their name and their assets, if it's not covered under a trust, will be published in a uh, paper. And it'll say, you know, John Jones died and he died, uh, and, and here is all of his assets. And anyone that has a claim may feel they have a claim on that asset. 
needs to now go to John Jones' attorney and or his family and submit a claim and it will be uh, verified and if it is a verified debt, it will be paid. That's actually what makes the probate uh, process so expensive because there is a lot of legwork there. Now the other side though is if you have a trust, it says John Joan passed away and his assets will be are managed under the John Jones Trust. Mm -hmm. And so that's where the privacy comes in is you don't have to say John Jones is now worth 50 million dollars and uh, anyone that wants to make a claim, come on down. Mm -hmm. So uh, my thought related to it, really, you might think it's an interesting one, and that is, uh, you know, this is public information if you have a probate. I mean, literally, this is available for public inspection. And so uh, if somebody wants to go shopping for a spouse, uh, you can go down and see who passed away recently and uh, who's got a significant estate and, you know, well, I don't know, you could maybe do some additional investigation with that starting point. But anyway, the fact of the matter is, is that this is all out there uh, for the public's information. Whereas with the trust, basically, it is private. Uh, so uh, somebody comes around, I mean, they, you can basically say, none of your beeswax. Uh, <laughs> and the courts, uh, at least in California, I can tell you, even if you do have to process some things uh, through the court uh, for whatever litigation or whatever, they still do try to keep it pretty much under wraps as far as that it you know, shouldn't be out in the newspapers and that sort of stuff. So um, that I see as the real benefit of the living trust. Some of the other things have been sort of oversold because you can still pay significant legal fees and have other costs. And my clients, uh, usually when somebody passes away, see, during your lifetime, you don't know that it's there. It's, it's, you know, it's, I don't know how to put it. It's like having a coin in your pocket and you've just forgotten that it's there. But then, after somebody passes away, then you have to administer this thing. And for the will or the trust, it's a big process. There's a lot of work that needs to be done. And usually you have other trusts that are being formed and so forth. So there is going to be significant costs that are involved. But it's privacy is a very big thing. Very important is privacy. And, and, and as you said, as many people, you know, is, but it's inconvenient. I have to, if I refinance my house, I have to take it out of the name of the trust. This, uh, uh, all sorts of other problems. Well, okay, that is an issue. But it's not nearly as big as, as you said, shopping for a spouse or shopping for someone's estate to be uh, chased with. And so that, that is a very important part. Okay. Dick, we only have a minute left. Can you take maybe 20 seconds and throw out, if you can, a, a final thought related to this? Yeah, I, mine is, is plan what you want to happen. If not, someone else will plan it for you. Okay. Thank you for that. So folks, I hope this maybe gave you uh, some ideas on how you can work with an advisor uh, and what the benefits might be for your family. Uh, there usually has to be, a, I've found a motivating reason for this to happen, but uh, you know, it's better if you do it in advance, it makes life a lot easier. And uh, with that, I hope we've given you something valuable to think about, uh, get together with your advisors about, and we'll see you next time on Financial Insider Weekly.